Today we're going to discuss very important quotes from Neville Goddard. And the premise is about reality being an externalization of our self, the concept of self. We're going to talk about it from two perspectives. Number one, we externalize what we are, which is our identity, concept of self, and the screen of space as externalized theater, screen of space, outer world. Neville says, you will change the world only when you become the embodiment of that which you want the world to be. Very important. You will change the world only when you become the embodiment of that which you want the world to be. Now we're going to speak in this discussion about relations with others. And no matter what we decide to do with our life, chances are our journey is involving, and even the destination, dealing or relating with others. The truth of the matter is, when we are relating with others, we are actually relating with ourselves. And not necessarily how we think we are, but more specifically, how we subconsciously are. Our moods, our desires, and our behaviors are externalized as the theater of life, which is revealed by the people that reflect the theater we play in our mind. This theater, which is our mental conversations, or imaginal acts, after a period of time, will bear fruit and externalize in this outer world, which we call reality, or as Neville puts it, the screen of space. The mind is likened to a garden, and the inner conversations of how we communicate with ourselves about others, as well as how we imagine ourselves to be in relation to others plants the seeds of idea in the subconscious garden of the mind which grows and brings forth into externalizes through branches you could say in the outer world as experiences or externalizations the garden represents the self the garden of the mind is you as a perspective and identity. He says, you have but one gift in this world that is truly yours to give, and that is yourself, which is your own individual garden. In my last video, I talked about the true self, and our goal in life is to keep the garden of our mind, to realize our true self. That is our gift, our true self. And our true self externalizes as relations with people, environment, circumstance, and information, which we call the heart desire brought forth. This is a result of changing the concept of self within. Simply put, tending to the garden of the mind in this moment right now. Unless you yourself are that which you want the world to be, you will never see it in this world. We may see the gradual changes which are a result of our own consciousness changing, or we may see somewhat of a change only to revert back to what is predominant in our consciousness. However, the truth still remains that when the concept of the self has changed, the relation with the outer world changes to reflect. Now, all of this happens in this moment right now. In the last video, I also mentioned, and I'll put a link in the description, the power of affirming that you are your true self right now, that it is already done, and that you are experiencing right now as in complete. Now, this may seem contrarian to the logical mind, that interprets reality from past, present, and future. 
we have to remember the very important concept of now as the eternal reality in which all time is contained. Now, this is a paradigm shift because perhaps we're so used to identifying with time in a linear style. As we continue to identify with time, the concept of ourself is identified with time as linear, we will experience the bridge of incidents and the externalization of what is in our mind in a process that is suggested by others that reveal the amount of time things take to bring forth into fruition. Now, Neville always says that every seed has its appointed hour. So we want the seed to have, and specifically put, be allowed to have its appointed hour without interfering with disempowering programming regarding how we relate to time, which is a manifestation of past experiences which we had in which we assumed to have certain biases as well as learn from others of how time operates with working with the concept of now and we'll talk about how to do it you'll start to notice that you transcend time results happen so to speak faster but more accurately put in alignment with the appointed hour Past and future are potentials. Now is a reality. Okay, very important. Past and future are potentials. And now is a reality. If our imagination is dwelling in the past or disempowerment in relation to our dreams and our aspirations in the future, or our inner voice conversations are, more specifically put, the ego mind-based conversations. I'm not speaking about the inner voice of intuition based conversations are dwelling in the disempowering of the past or the future, then we are experiencing that void or whatever the disempowering programming suggests in this present moment right now. So what do we do? We change what we are imagining right now. And he gives a very specific exercise on how to do it. We'll talk about it in a moment. To live in thoughts of what you might have done, or in dreams of what you might do, is to not realize it is done now. One of his biggest concepts and contributions to the space of understanding of how the law operates is the realization that once you know it is done, it is done. Let's listen to a clip here from Neville as he articulates it. All I have to do is to completely yield to this being within me. For he has ways and means I, on this level of my being, know not of. I rise then under compulsion. And under this compulsion, I go through a series of events which will lead up to the fulfillment of that to which I yield. I assume that it's done. And then I commune with myself and gave thanks within me that it is done. Once it is done, then the thoughts, the emotions, the behaviors, the outer world circumstances happens through you, through your own consciousness, to the fulfillment and the externalization of that particular experience in relation to the concept of yourself. In other words, do you externalize it from a place of force based on what's in the garden of mind or from an position of flow and autotelic, which is also what is within the garden of the mind. Thus, our role is to keep the garden of the mind. Now, we're talking about relating with others here because I believe it's very important. It says, instead of trying to change others through argument and force, let me but ascend in consciousness to a higher level and I will automatically change others by changing self. Okay, the temptation may be to change others. But the accurate way of doing it, everlasting, is to change ourselves by ascending into a consciousness that is higher in thought. There is no one to change but self. That self is simply your awareness, your consciousness, and the world in which it lives. It's determined by the concept you hold of yourself. It is to consciousness that we must turn as to the only reality 
for there is no clear conception of the origin phenomena except that consciousness is all and all is consciousness. What you can only interpret right now is what is related to your own consciousness. And when you relate with another person, what you're doing is relating with an attribute within your consciousness. Your belief, your assumptions, your ideas are externalized through the conversations and experiences we're having with others. Now, when we haven't brought forth into conscious awareness these elements that are buried within the subconscious, then we do not realize how so. But on the journey of self-realization, we understand accurately how so. This is a journey. And what we want to do is bring ourselves into the now, where all the power is, as well as bring ourselves to the now so that we can reflect upon the experiences that we're having in the now and understand where the source is within the consciousness. So as James Allen said, act now and lo, all things are done. Live now and behold, thou art in the midst of plenty. Be now and know that thou art perfect. At the core of who we are, we are perfect. We have assumed certain kinds of disempowering programming related to ourselves and our relationship with others and the outer world. And that is what we're releasing. I call this purification of the mind. Now, in regards to purification of the mind, he gives a process called revision. So let's go through the process and relate it to our discussion. here. He says, at the end of the day, I review my day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. And then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it, if it needs to be rewritten. If it did not go the way that was in harmony of how you would like to see it, we rewrite it. Why are we doing that? Because through this process, we purify the mind. We keep the garden. We release the past assumptions and beliefs that we had about ourselves in relation to others that externalized it. He says, I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it, and having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, that revised day, and I do it over and over in my imagination until this seeming imagined state begins to take onto me the tones of reality as we experience that it is done as indicated in the audio snippet. He says, it seems that it's real, that it actually did experience. Remember, past and future are potentialities. Now is the reality in which all time and everything exists now. So again, may seem contrarian to the mind that has been overly identified with the concept of past, present, and future. However, this is why we do it in a state akin to sleep to bypass this overthinking and perhaps critical mind and allow it to be assimilated and assumed to be so in the subconscious realm. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it. And having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive the day, the revised day. It seems that it is real that I actually did experience it. And I have found from my experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. When I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow. For in me, I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow to the change or of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision, which is this process, revising. Now this particular process has been very powerful and that's why I've been sharing it a lot in our discussions for me. And I have applied this in the realm of entrepreneurship, relationship with others, 
clients, vendors, team members, anyone, as well as in relationships, in friendships, and everyday interactions with people. And I have observed, as people have reflected, more so each day, the exact replica of what I had imagined to be so. And as I continue to do this, I believed in it even more. I trusted the process even more. And like with anything done with repetition, in which results are found, more so each day, we begin to work with it, understand it, and more accurately put, realize that it is the way of how it actually works. Now, the fundamental reason why this works is the journey of self-realization, which is that this reality is an externalization of our consciousness. And we don't have to realize this in totality right now in this moment, although it can happen, but perhaps more and more so each day, as you reflect back on your experiences with what you have with others, you realize that the power is now in this moment, all that exists in now, and those particular experiences that you had during the day, if we dwell in that, then we further affirm those aspects on the garden of the mind. We have the power to bring ourselves back into the now by revision. How so? Because revision keeps the guard of the mind. And then you're now in that moment when you realize it is done, is actually externalizing as thoughts, emotions, behaviors, as well as outer world circumstances to reflect what has affirmed in the garden of the mind, keeping in consideration that the garden of the mind is you, it is yourself, as well as the garden of the mind externalizes on the screen of space. Now, another very important element to keep into consideration about this is when we talk about living in the now, we're not talking about forcefully living in the now as in constantly reminding yourself, be in the now. What we're talking about in this context is revision to evolve and align the concept of self within so that we automatically subconsciously express the ideal way in the now. What you'll find is that you'll have a deep level of presence in the now because you won't be running away from what you might have thought was potentiality of externalization from the past or future, thus felt a disconnect between the now. But by doing the exercise of revision, you find yourself more in the now because this is the exact place that you really want to be. So when we look at somebody who's living a fulfilled life, and when you look at your own journey as you move into higher levels of living a fulfilled life, what you'll find is that you will value the now even more. You'll be more present. You will be more decisive. You will not put things off, so to speak, to the future, but you will do them and more accurately put, you will subconsciously and autotelically from a flow based way express it now. So as mentioned, the screen of space is consciousness externalized or as I like to call it, externalized theater. The outer world is theater externalized. From where? From within. That is the screen of space. He says, if you are disturbed, and by disturbed we're talking about what we experience on the screen of space, which is our own interpretation from within, projected outwards as disturbance, which reveals attributes about ourselves of the changes that need to occur within, so that it expresses itself with the ideal thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and circumstances changes to reflect accordingly. He says, if you are disturbed and you would like me to some, he says, if you are disturbed and you would like me to be something other than I appear to be, then you must be that which you want me to be. We must become the thing that we want others to be, or we will never see them be it. So much time is, I would say, invested, but in this case, I would call it wasted. Even though everything exists right now, let's use the concept of time just to articulate this point. So much time is wasted trying to change the outer world when time is better invested 
and changing the inner world through an exercise like the pruning shears of revision, which by the way, I have found that doesn't necessarily have to happen in the state akin to sleep. For me, I found that I could do it throughout the day because I maintain a more lighthearted state. If you're overly thinking and overly critical, then yes, a state akin to sleep can benefit you because as then you're not overly critical about the whole process and overthinking it, you're more accepting and allowing and affirming. Whereas, if you maintain a state of flow throughout the day, then what you'll find is that you're more lighthearted and you're more likely to be able to revise the experience you just had, affirm it to be so, and then experience the reflections on the theater real time. For example, let's use the process of sales in entrepreneurship. I get many entrepreneurs that have conversations with me about the fear of rejection. Well, the fear of rejection is a certain assumption that we have that we can release from. And working with Think and Grow Rich, I was able to release it to a large degree. But using this process of revision, real time in the moment, we can reflect upon this idea that what we're really doing when we approach the prospect is going in with a certain state of mind, which is part of the consciousness within. As in, we chose a certain consciousness to go into that particular experience. We identified with it. If there's no one to change but ourselves, then what we would do is we would change our consciousness. And we would recall in that moment that we are choosing a state of mind called fear of rejection or fear of failure. And all we have to do is release in that moment and bring us into it is already done state of mind, which is more flow based. Now, if you're having difficulty with this, then perhaps you have a lot of beliefs and assumptions identified with that particular experience. So the pruning shears of revision exercise when repeated will allow you to have more of this kind of experience that I'm going to talk about right now. Right now, as related to our discussion here, you have kept the garden of the mind relatively clean. You've done your work, inner work, we call it, and we've kept the garden of our mind to a certain level of purity, purity of mind. You approach the prospect, you're about to have a conversation and you experience a little bit of fear and you recognize right then in the moment that you are identifying with a certain state of mind. You realize that by identifying with that state of mind, reality will externalize. It'll externalize in your experiences with that person to reflect that mood within you. So it might turn into a convoluted, stress-based conversation with the prospect. Instead of a flow-based bringing the prospect towards a fair win-win based outcome sale, fair transaction. Because you had gone into the state of mind called fear, you were able to observe it. Perhaps right then and there you will observe the mental conversation or what you are imagining prior to approaching the prospect and change it right there and see it as a successful outcome. What I recommend in the sales realm is see it as either they're going to give you the optimal data to optimize your marketing, your selling, your positioning, and all the other things you learn in sales, objective data, or as I call it, optimization data, or it will lead to the sale. Either one of those two will bring you towards the number goal that you're looking to achieve when it comes to selling. I know this is something that I worked with for many years as I had hit different sales goals in the various businesses that I was involved with. Now, we're coupling this with Neville's process because I believe it's very specific and very powerful. The realization that in that moment we can change our state of mind is facilitated by our understanding that all power exists in the now and that there's a mental conversation or potential imaginal acts occurring prior to approaching the prospect and we have the power to change it. And if it seems persistent, then we note these elements down so that we could revise them later on in the night. The exact scene, you would see the prospect buying the product, or you would see the prospect giving you the optimization data, which is then going to further build your product or service, whatever resonates with you. However, each of those outcomes are empowering and in harmony with achieving your sales or entrepreneurial goals. So again, to echo this quote, he says, if you are disturbed, and you would like me to be something other than what I appear to be, 
then you must be that which you want me to be in your own imagination. Or we can experience creating from a place of force and going through the process of force, 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 if you'd like. That's uh, one way of doing it. However, what we're talking about here is working with the imagination, which has the ability to transform the subconscious into automatic behaviors that are in alignment with the ideal outcome. Now, as mentioned, I talked about inner conversations. Let's reflect upon what he says here. Our inner conversations represent in various ways the world we live in. Our individual worlds are self-revelations of our own inner speech. We are told that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof. For by their words they shall be justified, and by their words they shall be condemned. Now we're talking about inner voice conversations. It's important to observe the inner voice conversations that we're having because the inner voice conversations are affirming certain kinds of programming or keeping the garden mind to be in a certain state. And we want the garden of mind being in the state that is in harmony with what we desire to experience. As reflected in the sales experience and the entrepreneurship experience, the state of mind that reflects the kind of person that you know that you are right now in this moment who has that end result goal that state of mind. And if you find incongruence or inconsistencies, then again, we can revisit this revision process. Let's go through it one more time. He says, at the end of the day, I review my day. I don't judge it. So this is the key. Don't judge it. Simply review it. Don't add any additional meaning to it. Just simply review it. I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. And then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it, and having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day, and I do it over and over in my imagination until the seeming imagined state becomes or begins, as he says, to take on to me the tones of reality. Now that's done as the knowing that it is done as related to the audio clip that I played. It seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. And I have found from my experience that those revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. When I meet people tomorrow, that today disappointed me, if they disappointed you, they will not tomorrow. For in me, I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. So as mentioned, once this is done, you will observe the next day as you move into your prospecting, selling, whatever kinds of relations that you're having, friendships, whatever with others, that they will more so reflect and sometimes, depending on how deeply you know it to be so and maintain the state of mind, mirror the reflection, that particular experience that you had in your imagination, which is in harmony, golden rule, benefit for you and them. And that will be you living that particular experience in the now, working with the pruning shears of our vision. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.